लोक आस्था का महान पर्व है छठ जो न सिर्फ बिहार और यूपी में बल्कि उन तमाम जगहों पर पूरी श्रद्धा और आस्था के साथ मनाया जाता है जहां पूरब के लोग जाकर बस गए हैं रोजी रोटी के लिए पढ़ाई लिखाई के लिए व्यवसाय के लिए न सिर्फ महानगरों में बल्कि विदेशों में भी जब हम छठ पर्व की बात करते हैं तो इसके सुमधुर गीत की चर्चा स्वाभाविक है छठ पूजा के दौरान पूरा वातावरण छठ के गीतों से गुंजायमान रहता है क्योंकि छठ पर्व बिहार और यूपी में मनाया जाता है तो इसके गीतों में भी आंचलिक शब्दों की बहुतायत देखने को मिलती है दूसरे प्रांत के लोग भी इस आंचलिक शब्दों को समझने में बोल पाने में थोड़ी कठिनाई महसूस करते हैं ऐसे में अगर कोई विदेशी महिला छठ के गीत गुनगुनाए गाए और उनके गाए गीत सोशल मीडिया पर वायरल हो तो आपको हैरानी तो होगी जी हाँ क्रिस्टीन एक ऐसी ही महिला है जो अमेरिका के फ्लोरिडा में रहती हैं और उनके गाए छठ के गीत पिछले कुछ भी कुछ एक वर्षों से काफ़ी वायरल हुए हैं मैंने क्रिस्टीन से सोशल मीडिया के जरिए व्हाट्सएप के जरिए संपर्क साधने की कोशिश की उनके फेसबुक प्रोफाइल को खंगाला और उनसे बातचीत की बातचीत में उन्होंने क्या कुछ कहा छठ पर्व को लेकर छठ के गीत को लेकर भारतीय संस्कृति को लेकर भारतीय परंपरा को लेकर और भारत की आध्यात्मिकता को लेकर वो हम तो देखेंगे सुनेंगे ही लेकिन उससे पहले आइए क्रिस्टीन के गाय गीतों की कुछ झलकियां देखते हैं और फिर उस बातचीत को सुनते हैं हेलो दिस इज क्रिस्टीन गो विशिंग ऑल माई फ्रेंड्स इन बिहार अ वेरी वेरी हैप्पी छठ पूजा विशिंग एवरी वन मच लव मच हैप्पीनेस एंड आई होप यू विल एंजॉय दिस छठ पूजा सॉन्ग सुन छठ मई मोर बीनियासिया पूरन हो असिया पूरन हो आदित्या मल सहैया हो असिया पूरन हो असिया पूरन हो जन में अभागिन कहली हो असिया पूरन हो असिया पूरन हो खिलवा के पाद पर हो गैलन सूरज माल झाके झूके खेलवा के पात पर हो गैलन सूरज माल झाके झूके हे करेलू छठ पर तियास झाके झूके हे करेलू छठ पर तियास झाके झूके आइए अब क्रिस्टीन से हुई बातचीत को सुनते हैं So how did I come to Indian music? That is a very long and a very interesting story that seems to have begun even before I was born. Um so both my parents uh were music professors, musicians. My father has passed away, but he was the director of music composition at New York University. for 35 years his name was dinu d i n u getso same last name and my mom dr marta getso is still teaching um music at the city university of new york so i grew up in uh, a family of musicians and they were very passionate about many different traditions of music and it just so happened that when my uh mom was pregnant with me uh my parents were listening to a lot of indian classical music <laughs> so i started listening listening to it um in in her belly 
and um, they were refugees, political refugees from Romania. I was born in New York City, but they were from Romania, and they did not have many friends uh, in the U.S. at the time. And uh, the an Indian family actually hosted my baby shower, and. So I was celebrated uh, coming into this world at, at the house of an Indian family and they also happened to be playing Indian classical music during that party. So I strongly believe that that imprinted um, the direction of my life and uh, coming to Indian classical music uh, and traditional music, folk music, um, as you know, I also sing bhajans and many different traditions in Indian music and world music traditions also. So how did I become so dedicated to learning Indian music? That turning point happened about 15 years ago. I was having lunch at an Indian restaurant in Jackson Heights, Queens, and they were playing the soundtrack to the movie Raincoat with the incredible uh, singer Shubhamudga. And I was sitting there and I went into a complete trance listening to her and listening to that music. And in that moment, I knew I just knew that I had to learn Indian music, that there was a deeper calling. I was already a vocalist and I started performing when I was seven years old because my parents, as I said, were um, musicians as well. Um, but I was singing Romanian, Hungarian, Eastern European traditional music. That's part of my background. And so after listening to that soundtrack um, in a restaurant, I just knew that I was very inspired and motivated to find a guru. And I, uh, my first guru was uh, Pandit Kamal Mishra. Uh, he taught at a school co called Shikshayatan in Queens, which was run by Purnima Desai. And, um, Pandit Mishra has since passed away and in more recent years um, I moved from New York to Florida. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is close to Tampa and I found my Guruji, uh, Pandit Radharamani Kirtane, um, who runs the Pandit Jasraj School of Music in Tampa, Florida. and. It's really in the last five years um, and living here that my um, dedication to learning Indian music, specifically North Indian classical music. Um, I'm being uh, trained in a very traditional Guru Shisha Parampara. I feel very blessed and really all credit goes uh, to my gurus. Um, so, Pandit Radhara Manekirtane um, is a senior disciple of Pandit Jasraj and um, he, uh, there are no words to express um, what an amazing vocalist he is and what an amazing teacher he is and how generous um, of a soul to really want to teach all of us students as much as he can. And I'm also very fortunate to study with Pandit um, Ratan Mohan Sharma, who is Pandit Jasraj's nephew who comes from India once a year. And then at that time, I take classes with him as well. Am I familiar with the uh, socio-cultural diversity of India. Um, to a certain extent I am, of course, because I've been um, on this path for a long time, but India is such an immense place with many, many different 
cultures and languages and practices that um, I feel like I am still just at the very um, edge of having an understanding of the, the vastness of Indian uh, cultural traditions, spiritual traditions. Um, this is something that I am learning on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, my friends, uh, my gurus, all um, are part of that learning process. And um, having so many friends in Bihar now and being part of the Chat Puja festivities, um, I keep learning more and more about that. But um, no, I would not say in any way that I am an expert. I still have so much to learn in regards to that. When was my first trip to India and what was the impact or the attraction um, there at that time? So my first trip uh, to India was around the year 2007 and I uh, went with my husband and we went to New Delhi, Jaipur, Agra and Varanasi and um, I had already been studying uh, Indian classical music, but only very briefly. So at that time, uh, it, I went to India with the beginner's mind. So it was truly um, a learning experience, the impact. And um, I must say that going to Varanasi, uh, my first time in India was the most incredible experience. It still uh, remains um, in my heart as uh, one of the most transformative experiences of my life. Um, and I think it was actually that trip that solidified my dedication to this path. Because at that point in Varanasi, in this city where both life and death are so present and the um, energy of Lord Shiva is so um, tangible. Uh, I just knew that uh, there is no going back <laughs> after that. And it also um, made a profound um, impact obviously on my inner life and of uh, exploring uh, the, the deeper levels of the, the spiritual meaning um, that India holds in many different ways. There are so many, as we discussed earlier, so many diverse traditions. But Varanasi, um, the intermingling of life and death, the Mother Ganga, Lord Shiva, um, all converging um, was one of the most profound experiences of my life. And then two years ago, um, I was invited uh, to Assam, to Silchar, uh, by a company called the Northeast India Company, um, to do an artist residency um, with them and to do um, a solo concert at their facility. And I spent uh, close to one month in Silchar, Assam, and met amazing people. I worked with wonderful musicians um, in a vast variety of different musical traditions. And uh, that was also a very um, transformative experience for me. For me. And um, on that same trip, I was in Kolkata and um, gave a house concert on a rooftop in uh, old, the old quarters of Kolkata, and that was, um, that made my heart so happy. And uh, being in the city of Mother Kali and going to Dakshinashwar was also another uh, transformative experience for me. And I'm very much looking forward to going back, hopefully, maybe next year, um, if the universe agrees. <laughs> oh, 
who is my music guru and how does he teach me? So my guru is Pandit Radharamani Kirtane. Um, he is a senior disciple of the great Sangeet Martand Pandit Jasrajji of the Mevati Gharana. And my Guruji is originally from Mumbai. He's Maharashtran. And uh, we study, all the students um, with him, study under a very traditional Guru Shisha Parampara. Um, he runs an organization here in Tampa, Florida uh, called the Pandit Jasraj Institute of Music. And we have many, many students of all age groups from uh, three years of age to 60 years of age. And I am in the upper category in my 40s. Uh, but um, we have a big community of students. Um, we have a very traditional Gurukul. Um, I'm studying uh, North Indian uh, classical music uh, with my Guruji. And um, words cannot express how grateful I am to have him as my guru. He is truly the, the best example of a living guru who um, is both an incredible vocalist, an uh, incredible performer, but also so dedicated to teaching his students and um, has so much wisdom and knowledge. Any question, um, he has a, a full explanation for and such a generosity of spirit where he wants all of us to really learn um, as much as we can from him. Um, there is nothing held back. He wants each of us to succeed and to learn and to make this music um, a deep part of uh, our lives. So each one of us are so grateful to him and all credit for everything that I'm doing now goes to him. Uh, it's 100% uh, clear on that. I am also very blessed that I have an opportunity to uh, study um, with Pandit uh, Ratan Mohan Sharma, uh, who is Pandit Jasraj's nephew and uh, my Guruji's Gurubai. So he comes from India once a year and he stays at the Gurukul for one, two months and we all have an opportunity to learn with him as well. So how did I start singing Chat Puja songs? First of all, I would like to express how deeply grateful I am um, to have been welcomed so warmly and for so many people to be listening to these recordings. Um, I n never had this expectation and I feel very, very deeply blessed and very, very humbled by how everything is unfolding with the Chat Puja songs. So three years ago, a Facebook friend of mine, Vishesh, um, saw a video of, me, video of me singing a Diwali song. And he reached out and uh, said, Hey, Christine, um, I'm from Bihar and in a few days Chat Puja is starting and uh, could you please learn this song, Kan Chahi um, And so, um, I could share it with my friends and family. It would mean a lot to me. And I said, of course, if you send me the words and the translation, I would be happy, very, very happy and honored to, to sing um, a Chat Puja song for you. And so I sung, um, I made an iPhone video holding it and really uh, I understood the meaning of the words, but the pronunciation was far from perfect. But I just did a very casual video. That's the first video that I released, which now on one site has over 1.1 million views. Um, I, I sent it to him 
and uh, I went to sleep right after that, the time difference. <laughs> and when I woke up, suddenly um, I had an inbox full of messages and uh, people uh, reaching out to me and I realized that within uh, the span of 12 hours that first video had gone viral and um, I um, it felt like I was actually living on another planet <laughs> I it still feels like that sometimes um, but with full grateful heart, but um, it happened so unexpectedly. And since then, um, every year I sing at least one song. Actually, last year I did, um, I did two songs last year, and then I did uh, two songs this year. So then last year, uh, another Facebook friend, um, Aditya Prakash Anoka of Akar Bojpuri reached out to me and he taught me two more songs and um, and those were spread far and wide as well and um, it's just been incredible and then this this year um, a, a group um, of friends from the organization of Purwa uh, reached out and said, could you please sing our uh, composition, uh, Puta Asa Dhiyo Wu, and um, I recorded that, and that is, um, from what I understand or what I was told today, is has also gone viral. Um, it, like I mentioned, it never was my expectation uh, for these songs to be viral, but I, I feel very deeply grateful to the people that have worked with me along the way, who um, felt a connection to my spirit and uh, gave me the honor of singing songs that are important to them and to the festival of Chat Puja. So the question is, um, in the Chat Puja songs, these are in languages that are prevalent in uh, Bihar and some parts of UP, and how did I uh, come to learn these words or understand um, the meaning or the language? Uh, so for each song, I have somebody that is giving me the words written out in a Roman lettering so I can read the lyrics. It's in um, in the traditional languages, like Bojpuri, but it's written out in a Roman script. And I also receive a full translation in English. And um, the process that it takes for me to learn a song is um, quite involved because I have to feel the meaning and I have to feel the words uh, before I can record anything or else it's, it, do, it just doesn't carry um, the energy that it, that it needs to. And for that, I am completely reliant on the friends um, along the way that have taught me these songs. And each year I become more familiar with the words and more familiar with the the meaning of the festival and um, I uh, what I really hope for is to find a, a group um, uh, maybe a group of people cultural association of Bihar in the United States and go to an actual Chat Puja festival I do hope to come to India at some point again soon, um, but that is, you know, a, a more uh, involved trip. And I, I hope to, I, I have not yet attended an in-person Chat Puja, and I feel it is definitely the time to do that. So hopefully that will come by next year.